Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we want to estimate the air variance. And what, what that means is this. So we ha have a population model that we're proposing as this. It's a linear combination of our predictive variables and these betas and, and uh, um, this is it in vector notation. It can be written like this. Now, in, so this is, it's, this is vector notation but still scalar, so it's I from 1 to N. This is in matrix notation. And note from PV21 that the, um, the first column of X is all 1's, right? And that has to do with this beta parameter here, beta 0. But the expected value of our error is 0, and the covariance matrix is sigma squared i. And it's actually this sigma squared that we want to try to estimate. And as a goal, I want to use as much matrix notation as possible, because in the long run, I think it's going to help us with multiple linear regression. So the, the setting is, let's let these tuples be a random sample, right? So we have our y and we have our x as the predictive variable. So this is one observation all the way to our nth observation. We have y and all our x's. And then um, we want to use the least squares estimates for beta, namely beta hat. So y is uh, now this is our sample estimate so y is equal to our least squares line equation plus some air or some residual and generically we write the this as y hat that you know um, and this is for i equals one to n so um, the air term if we subtract over the, the, the y hat we get this or you know if you want to think about it as the x and the betas it's this now in matrix notation instead of having one of these for each observation we just put them all in vectors so this is e you know with the vector symbol so this is an n by one vector y equals this, this is an n by one vector and then this is the X beta. So that's the, the design matrix and that's the beta parameters. Now as a reminder, and that should be beta hat, not a vector. So that's beta hat. It's the least squares estimates. And then we showed that um, this right here is the hat matrix times y. And then if we right factor out a y, we get this. So it's identity minus the hat matrix why so that's the residual and this is what we're going to mess with a lot of the times um, note that the average error so that or, you know or you could think of it this or this vector is you add up the, the errors and divide by n that's that's the average but the sum of the e's it can be thought of as this right um, this is just the vector of the E's dotted with I, you know, and that's the sum. But E is this matrix, right? Now we trans take the transpose in and we get this. But this is zero. And you can, and from the previous video 23, since one is in the column space of X, right? It's the first column, then um, and I minus H is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement of the column space of X. And what that means is that for every vector in the column space of X, we get, you know, zero when you pre-multiply it by this perpendicular projection matrix. And that's what we get here. So H times 1 is 1, and identity times 1 is 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0 in your previous video 23 in the list. So as a first estimate of sigma squared, let's use S squared. And we're going to divide by N. And I know some of you will say, wait, but 
but that means it's biased or you know it's not in minus one or two or we'll develop an unbiased estimate next but this is just our first estimate so and plus if I were to say um, you know how do you calculate the variance of I have some data X X's or X I's how would you calculate the variance well you'd go the sum of the XI minus X bar the mean you know squared you sum them up and you divide by something right and so it seems reasonable to use this as an estimator right but note remember that Y hat or the mean of the error terms is zero so let's stick in zero there and we're just left with this uh, the sum of the EI squares now Remember EI, you could we could write it like this, where you know it's the you know this is the uh, E was the right YI minus Y hat, so you could plug that in and then start doing things from there. But we're going to use matrix notation, so th the sum of the EI squares can be thought of as this dot product or vector multiplication E times e you know right you get the sum of the ei squareds and then each one of these e's can be thought of as this right then you you trip you put the transpose in and we get this right because then it reverses them but but i minus h is symmetric and i minus h is idempotent so that goes to this and this is it. That's our estimate of sigma squared in matrix notation. Now, as some of you have probably already thought about, this is a biased estimate because we're not dividing by the right number. But this is a good estimate. And it ends up being the maximum likelihood estimate. So it's, it's a decent estimate, just not unbiased. So let's find an unbiased estimate for the error variance. And we're going to make use of a video that I have called the mean, the variance, and the covariance of quadratic forms. And as a reminder, the mean of y is x beta, and the variance of y is uh, sigma squared i. So when we take the expected value of, oh, we may get a visit from my cat. <laughs> and I'll flash it here. Hi, Ada. He likes to be right next to the action. Um, so the expected value of this quadratic form, we're going to use this video. And it ends up being the trace of this matrix times the variance covariance matrix. And then it's plus the mean, this matrix, and the mean. Of course, there's a transpose there. So now. Here, um, this is the identity matrix, and that so and the constant can come out front of the trace. So we're left with this, and this is zero because i minus h, you know, times x is zero, right? This is the perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement of the column space of x. So when you take x times it, you get zero, so that drops out. So now the trace of I minus H, so the trace of, of the identity matrix is you add up the diagonals, which are N of them, and the hat matrix is this, and trace, you can move things around. So if you move this X to the back side, then this is the inverse of, of this, you know, what you just, and so it's the identity matrix, So the, but it's a K plus one identity matrix. So the trace would be k plus 1. And so the expected value of this quadratic form is sigma squared times n minus k plus 1. So, oh, as a node, this is a perpendicular projection makes on the orthogonal column space of x. So thus, i minus, I minus h x is 0. And that's why this piece is 0. So that means that if we take the quadratic form and divide it by this piece here 
then this is an unbiased estimate for sigma squared, right? Because this is a constant would come out front, then the expected value of this is this, the constant would cancel, and we're left with sigma squared. So this is an unbiased estimate. So let's find the distribution of this quadratic form divided by sigma squared. Now, as a reminder, y is multivariate. Whenever we find distributions, we have to make assumptions. So now we're going to assume that the y is multivariate normal with this mean and this variance covariance matrix. Now, if we divide y by the um, 1 over sigma, it, then it makes this a multivariate normal with this mean and variance covariance matrix, the identity matrix. And we are going to use the results of this video, Distribution of Quadratic Forms, which I have in, it's a video in a playlist app called Quadratic Forms. And a, a note here is that I minus H is symmetric and it's idempotent, and the rank of it is N minus K plus 1. Okay, so these two notes play an important part in this video. So that means that this is chi squared with N minus K plus 1 degrees of freedom and with this non centrality parameter. But note over here, the I minus HX again, right? So that's going to be zero. So the non-centrality non parameter is zero. So it's a central chi-squared. So this distribution is a central chi-squared with N minus K plus 1 degrees of freedom. Um, or you can think of it as this quadratic form is distributed as sigma squared times chi-squared with N minus K plus 1 degrees of freedom, if you multiply that up. Now, um, this is going to be, so this unbiased estimate and its distribution is, is going to be so important in hypothesis tests, and so that's why we had to do it. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.